In a previous video, I introduced present values, future values, and timelines. There, we looked at cases where we calculated a present value of a single future cash flow. Here, I'm going to expand the framework to include multiple cash flow cases. For example, suppose some asset promises to pay cash flows in each of the next four years. How much is that asset worth today? After this video, you'll have the tools to find the answer. Here's an example problem from a previous video. You'll need $10,000 in a bank account four years from now. How much should you deposit today in order to meet this goal? The account's stated interest rate is 4% per year. Recall that to solve this problem, we first drew a timeline. So the timeline's gonna look like this. I have four ticks on the timeline. And the only cash flow that shows up is the $10,000 cash flow that occurs in year four. And so we are asked to find a time zero representation of that time four cash flow. So in other words, we're asked to find the present value through discounting. The formula for solving this problem is present value equals the future cash flow divided by one plus the discount rate raised to the fourth power, since again, it is a time for or year for cash flow. And so the answer to this problem is $8,548 and four cents. And so the interpretation here is that I am indifferent between 8548.04 at time zero and $10,000 at time four. Now suppose we tweak the previous example such that we're gonna receive the $10,000 two years from now instead of four years from now. How do we proceed? You got it. Still draw a timeline, but the $10,000 just shows up at a different point. It shows up earlier. And so again, we're going to discount, but here we're only going to discount the $10,000 two periods instead of four. And then we'll solve for the present value once again. Now, is the answer here going to be larger or smaller than it was before? It's going to be larger. The reason for that is the future cash flow is the same as it was before, but you're receiving it sooner in this case than you would have in the previous case. And so it's worth more to you today. And so incorporating the relevant formula, we're going to say the present value is equal to $10,000 divided by one plus the discount rate again. And here, since the $10,000 is occurring in year two, we have a two as the exponent. And so the answer is $9,245.56. And so the interpretation is we're indifferent between $9,245.56 today and $10,000 two years from now. Now let's simply combine the previous two examples. So let's suppose you need two withdrawals. One, is $10,000 two years from now, and the second, $10,000 four years from now. How much should you deposit today in order to meet the goal? So this is the same type of present value equivalence problem as we worked before. Uh, it's just a little bit more complex. So let's draw the timeline. So as before, we've got four periods. but both the time two and time four cash flow need to show up. So here's what we need to do. We need to discount this cash flow two periods, and then we need to discount this cash flow four periods. And so the answer is just the sum of each cash flow individually discounted. So the present value is the time two cash flow discounted two periods 
plus the time for cash flow, discounted for periods. We know from before what these individual values are, so I'll just write them here. And adding up, we have 17,793 and 60 cents. And so what's the interpretation of this number as the present value of the two cash flows? The interpretation is that we're indifferent between $17,793.60 right now at time zero and the combination of the two $10,000 cash flows in years two and four, respectively. Now the previous example is really simple, but it illustrates a much more general rule about finding the present value of a series of future cash flows. In words, the general rule is the present value of a series of cash flows equals the sum of the individual cash flows present values. So in other words, you can simply calculate each individual cash flow's present value one at a time and then add up the answers to get the present value of the series. This is going to be true for two different future cash flows. It's going to be true for a thousand different future cash flows. So it's very flexible. Here's a formula. Note that I've used the letter C to denote all of the future cash flows and each one of these C's has a subscript to tell us the year in which it occurs. Note also there's implicitly a one here and so the subscript of the cash flow always matches the exponent. So for example the cash flow in year four has an exponent of four in the denominator because it needs to be discounted four years. Now for the example that we just saw there was no cash flow in year one there was no cash flow in year three, and there were no cash flows after year four. So the present value formula simply contained these two terms. And finally, just so you won't be caught off guard, I want to mention that this formula is often expressed in summation notation like this. This notation simply says to take this expression here and insert all values for i between 1 and infinity and then add up the terms. In other words, that expression says to do exactly this.